In this video, we're going to talk about order of operations and just uh, remind you how this works. It should be a review for the most part for most of you, um, but I do want to remind you. Uh, when we talk about order of operations, we're talking about um, the order which we do um, the different operations in a numeric expression because uh, if there's just one operation, then the, the order doesn't matter. But if you have two, then it becomes important for us to define what order things happen in. Uh, there is a, uh, an acronym that most people know called PIMDOS. It helps us to remember this order. Um, the order is, the first thing you always look at are parentheses. Um, and we'll talk about how this works through some of our examples. But you always want to look inside parentheses first. So essentially you look inside the parentheses and then you do the rest of these according to that, those parentheses. The next thing you always look at is exponents. You always want to evaluate exponents first, if at all possible. Okay, the exponents are going to come as early as possible because you, you don't want to multiply something that has an exponent with something that doesn't have an exponent. Then these next two you basically do together, um, and that's multiplying and dividing. Um, when you multiply and divide, you, you, you start from left to right, on your multiplying and dividing. So it, it, whichever comes first from left to right, that's what you do, either multiplying or dividing. Or you, you can either divide first or multiply first, but you basically do those together from left to right. Same thing for adding and subtraction. Addition, subtraction, they come after multiplication and division, and you do them also from left to right. So we have some examples that I want to talk about. Um, in these examples, we're going to follow order of operations. So this example one we look at, and we don't see any parentheses, so we don't have to worry about parentheses. There are no exponents, so we don't have to worry about exponents. Um, and then we can multiply and divide, so that's what we should do first. Well, um, the first multiplication is 3 times 5, which is 15. We don't want to subtract until we've done all multiplication and division, so we'll just ignore that subtraction sign for now. This is where it matters. Right, you don't want to do 2 divided by 4 before you multiply by 6. Um, so you're going to do 6 times 2 first, which will give you 12, and then divided by 4, and then plus 5. Again, resist the temptation to add or subtract here. We're not done multiplying or dividing, so don't start adding and subtracting. So before we add and subtract, we need to do our 12 divided by 4, which would give you 15, minus 12 divided by 4 is 3, plus 5, now we can add or subtract. We move from left to right, so we do 15 minus 3 first, which is 12. And then we're going to add 5, which gives you 17. So the answer to that problem is 17. Okay, the next thing you're going to um, look at, um, we'll do another problem like this. Uh, you should try to do this problem first. So I would pause the video and do this problem. I would do that on all these examples. This is a very common problem that people miss a lot. It's a very tempting to do this first, but on PEMDAS it always says do parentheses first. So the first thing we need to do is evaluate what's inside this parentheses. Well, once we decide we're inside the parentheses, we use the order of operations. Well, inside the parentheses, the only thing you have is addition. So before you do anything else, you should do 4 plus 3, which would be 7. Notice I did not add 5 and 2. I'm not going to add 5 and 2 until I've got through with all my parentheses and all my multiplication. So now this is 2 times 7, so I, there's no more parentheses. The parentheses have already been evaluated, no exponents, but there is a multiplication, so I need to do the 2 times 7, which is 14, and 5 plus 14 does equal 19. So notice we could not do this until we've gone through and evaluated this whole expression with the parentheses and the multiplication. Okay, in example three, again, pause it, try it on your own, and then uh, start the video back up, and you can watch, watch how the solution is. This one, we need to evaluate parentheses first. And so the first parenthesis is this 4 plus 1. So we're going to evaluate that to 5. So let's just deal with that first. Okay, we've dealt with the parentheses. Now we've got to look for the exponents. <coughs> do not multiply 4 times 12 and then square that. You've got to take the exponent before you do the multiplication. So 3 squared is going to be 9. Again, don't do 2 times 5. Square the 5 first. Exponents come before multiplication, so 5 squared is 25. Now we can do multiplication, which we're going to do before the addition. 4 times 9 is 36. 2 times 5 is 50. 
Now finally we can add together and that's going to give us 86. Okay, our last example. Um, this one includes a fraction bar. Well, for, first off, remember that fraction, a fraction bar always means division. The second thing is, whenever you see a fraction bar, you need to consider the top as if it's in parentheses and the bottom as if it's in parentheses. So we have to um, evaluate the entire top separate from the entire bottom, then we can deal with the division. So in this problem, actually, the last thing we're going to do is division. But we need to go through and um, evaluate the top. So that's just got powers. 1 squared is 1. 3 squared is 9. The bottom, we need to evaluate separately. We're not, not going to do this subtraction, but we can evaluate this parenthesis. Remember, parentheses always come first. 4 minus 2 is 2 squared. We're evaluating these separate. 1 plus 9 is 10, so we're done with the numerator at the top of the fraction. The bottom of the fraction, I don't want to do 8 minus 2. I've got to do the square first. And so that's going to give you 8 minus 4, right? Because 2 squared is 4. So that's going to leave you with 10 over 4, which we always want to simplify fractions, which will leave us with 5 over 2, or 5 halves. So that's just a review of uh, order of operations. Hopefully it's something you're used to. We're going to do a lot of problems this summer in order of operations. Order of operations is one of the most important concepts to algebra and algebra 2. Um, Pre-calculus is just over and over again you, you deal with the order of operations.